my name is uh, Rana Abdul Ghafoor and I've been teaching uh, since 2010. I've been teaching literature, linguistic, neurolinguistic, uh, linguistic, and many other subjects like philosophy, psychology, and competitive exam. I am founder of uh, the ESL Academy where I teach linguistic, literature, psychology, ph philosophy, and competitive subjects. So today I would like to uh, teach you about uh, neurolinguistic programming. Neurolinguistic programming, it was uh, uh, founded by Richard Bandler and uh, John Grinders. Both uh, stu teacher student they founded uh, neurolinguistic programming. Neurolinguistic programming, neuro mean our brain, our neurology. So through your neuro neurology, through your nervous system, you are going to achieve certain task certain programs so our neurons and uh, our uh, you know language they both combine together and they produce certain programs in neurolinguistic programming you you achieve your specific objective so how you achieve you achieve by combining your neurology and linguistic neurology our nervous system and our nervous system controls our language. So whenever we talk about language, it's not mere verbal. It's non-verbal as well. So when we communicate with somebody, we use our language in verbal form and non-verbal form. In verbal, according to research, in verbal we use only 7%. 55% we use our body language and 38% our tones. So this way we communicate with others. Both uh, our nervous system or our language, they combine to make our programs. We get our program uh, from our you know, institutions, our parents, our teacher, our schools. And uh, according to this program, we spend our uh, later life. If we program our student, our, uh, uh, you know, our college student, students, our followers and uh, our, uh, you know, employees, we can take a, a better result by programming, by giving them certain programs. So, neurolinguistic programming can be helpful for teachers, for businessmen, for entrepreneurs, for uh, teachers, for doctors, for nurses, uh, for, uh, you know, any field because it's related to everybody. Everybody uses language in a way to convey ideas. So both in verbal and non-verbal uh, form. What, uh, was it is, uh, what is it good for? So if we talk about uh, neuro-linguistic programming, how does it help a teacher? How does it help a entrepreneur? How does it help a businessman? How does it help for professors and lecturers? Ability to manage your internal state. You mean ev every person. Every person is having external dialogue and uh, internal dialogue. When we talk to anybody, we use uh, our internal dialogue as well as external dialogue. Neurolinguistic programming give us awareness, consciousness. And uh, with awareness and consciousness, we can better uh, we can have better response and we can get uh, manage our internal state help to help you to stay resourceful during stressful time when we learn neurolinguistic program programming it gives us consciousness and awareness and through this awareness we can be resourceful during stressful time we have uh, excitement we have terror feeling so terror feeling and excitement they they use the same uh, portion of our brain so whenever we are excited or whenever we are in terror so feeling is same so our body is experienced and going through same process but so here it gives us consciousness and awareness during the excitement and during the terror feeling how we can remain in us in a resourceful state while in terror feeling, while in stressful feeling, while in, uh, you know, distressed mood, whatever, you can be resourceful. And the third thing is that 
give you high degree degree of behavior behavioral flexibility in difficult situation you mean every person may pass through difficult situations and uh, uh, you know difficult difficult circumstances neuro linguistic programming it gives us awareness how to have flexibility because when you are flexible you can manage any uh, you know situation you can man manage any circumstances you can go through easily and you can have uh, uh, a good elasticity in your behavior and way of thinking and uh, approaching thing fourth thing is that uh, increase the speed with which you can learn neuro linguistic programming is related to brain and when you have awareness you can increase your speed of learning you you learn that uh, 55% you need body language in, in a way to convey your idea 38% tone and 7% words so when you learn this you can increase your speed of learning help you become more influ influential members of your teams when you learn neuro linguistic programming when you get training of uh, neuro linguistic programming you can be active member of your team because you know how to learn thing how to manage thing how to interact with other how to uh, cope with uh, you know more flexible behavior so this way it give you it boosts your confidence and it give you uh, you know a kind of professional look tool you can use to model and reproduce excellence result in any field nlp is a tool to model and reproduce ex excellent result nlp it, it is itself model because it models other behavior if you see some people they are good at running if you see some people they are good shooter if you see some people they are good teacher coach trainer or hypnotherapist or therapist you can follow their language you can mirror and match with them and after that after modeling you can have good result how how does it possible it is po possible through modeling because nlp is a model it reproduce excellent result in any field take any field just model it and have good result neuro linguistic programming neuro linguistic programming is a psychology it's a it's a psycho psychology it's an approach that involve analyzing strategy and use a successful individual and applying them to reach personal goal it relates thoughts language patterns behavior learned through experience to specific outcome if we see its definition its definition tells us neuro linguistic programming is a goal oriented it's a result oriented and how it's a result oriented it is related to our thought our neurology our nervous system and combining our nervous system with our language it produce it produces excellent result nlp is set of modalities uh, modeling tools you can use to observe model and reproduce excellent excellence result in any field nlp activities nlp practitioners believe there are natural hierarchies of learning communications and change six logical levels of uh, uh, levels of change are so first purpose and spirituality if you have purpose and spirituality it's easy to get change in your behavior in your attitude in in your way of learning if you have solid uh, foundation behind learning any task for example if you want to if want if you want to leave your bad habit and you have uh, uh, solid religious and eth ethical or religious foundation behind it it's easy to leave you want to leave uh, smoking you would want to leave any addictions and if there is a solid moral and uh, ethic religion religion or any solid reason to leave it it's easy to leave because purpose and spirituality plays its play it plays major role to achieve any task so it is also available in neuro linguistic programming programming because it talks about belief system 
if you have a belief to to change anything you can change easily because it works at uh, our mind levels and uh, over there it changes it uh, reimprint and it reshape our idea ideas our beliefs our uh, our thoughts and second is identity identity plays vital role in nlp whenever you look at other thing whenever you look uh, you know on on yourself you look on other it all depends on your identity if you have limited identity you will be having limited uh, achievement so whatever you identify yourself you get same result i identify myself region center i identify myself uh, my country center i identify myself cosmic center so it depends on my identity how i identify myself on the basis of my identity i can perform something whatever i want to get so here identity also matters a lot when you study neuro linguistic programming here identity is the person you perceive yourself to be and include your responsibility and the role you play in life so you identify yourself cosmic level you identify yourself region level you identify yourself country level according to your identification you are going to achieve your result and according to identification you are going to perform it depends so nlp also works at identity level and change someone self image change someone identity level so you can identify yourself bigger thing rather smaller thing you can identify yourself international level not national level not region level so here nlp works at identity level as well believe and values whatever you get you get according to your belief believe works a lot in nlp it it also helps to to form your beliefs so there are it forms that whatever you are getting it's the base of uh, your actions and doing whatever you are doing whatever your action you are getting result so it works at belief level it works at uh, values level whatever you give value whatever you give value you work for that i have value of certain uh, you know ethics certain uh, you know custom uh, my religion my my parents my education system my country so whatever i value i will be uh, producing result for this so these are your personal belief systems and issue that matters to you to you a lot so this is belief and value so nlp works at beliefs and value level as well capability and skill these are your ability what you can do so nlp helps you to improve your capability your your skills behaviors behaviors are the specific action you perform so whatever you perform it's 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 is your action and on the basis of your behavior definitely you will be getting result environment in nlp we learn that n r our our habit our environment our people our surrounding our information we react and we act and we respond according to our information if we have a good information good environment good surrounding our response will be good so nlp studies at at environment level as well how environment forms person's behaviors actions values and way of thinking perceiving and understanding so no i would like to talk about uh, history of neuro linguistic when we talk about uh, history of neuro linguistic programming there are two person they collaborated and uh, they worked for neuro linguistic programming in 1970 two teacher and uh, student john john grinder and richard bandler they come together and they started working on psychology neuro linguistic how our program is formed and uh, he takes help from his student john grinder uh, takes help from his student and he forms group 
over there he add many people they are related to psychology they are therapists they are hypnotherapist and they were family therapist so he forms group and over there he added many people related to psychology and therapist and uh, neurology like that so he adds them and after that they started working on on mind how our mind perceive information so they work at modality and sub sub modality five senses are five senses uh, touch taste sight smell sound it is known as uh, modality which is known as five modalities and uh, on the basis of our modality we have sub modality for example if we talk about uh, visual visual or uh, you know vi our visual system our uh, sight system we see thing in the form of pictures but uh, the picture we are seeing it can be dark it can be colorful it can be col colorless it can be blank it can be white it can be what form you see and what form you are uh, you are perceiving in your brain so when you see picture in uh, colorless or colorful form or your dark or bright or brown what else you see in your mind so if it is a color colorful we will say sub modality in colorful form picture in colorful form it will be our sub modality so when we see uh, you know in dark or bright or what else so modality and sub modality they started working on modality level sub modality level identity level or consciousness level subconscious level and conscious level they started working and they take help from three a therapist of that time because they were working on their clients they were working on their patients and they were producing wonderful result there were three main therapists that time they were working in america one was you know virginia setter then there was uh, you know another was milton erickson's and there then there was uh, uh, fritz perls so they were three therapists and they were working at international level they were getting lot of clients and they were producing wonderful result they model their language and after using their model they produced they produce wonderful result they even research they wrote book and uh, they worked at international level people come to them and they model uh, other behaviors uh, you know they model other people they were successful and they produce good good result and three robin is also one of them they also call he also collaborated with richard bandler and they work on shooters they take some good shooters and after working on shooters they take some people they don't know about shooting so what happened they they model their way of uh, you know acting their uh, their way of uh, uh, using gun they their way of uh, you know uh, working so they model them and after modeling a uh, successful shooter they they get wonderful result so it mean if uh, i can do something somebody can also learn it nlp works at uh, uh, you know many supposition so there are presupposition about nlp if i can do something wonderful somebody can also learn it there is only uh, feedback there is no failure there is only feedback there is no failure people achieve what they believe what they value so nlp works at a supposition presupposition level as well where people get what they believe there is only feedback there is no failure and uh, they, if i can do somebody can do as well so it works at this level four pillars of nlp there are four pillars of nlp first pillar of nlp is rapport building when we learn nlp nlp guides nlp teaches us that we have to create rapport you work in organization you work in school college university do you have rapport with your colleagues do you have rapport with your head do you have rapport with your principal your uh, you know boss it depends how you use your rapport building if you use your rapport building you will create connection 
you are not uh, going to call a university or office other feel something for you other feel your absence it is known as repo so nlp works at a repo level it creates repo it helps you how to create repo to create repo you need mirror mirroring and matching it's also nlp techniques so you use certain nlp techniques to create repo you can work in your organization you can work uh, through repo building in your school college in your business uh, with your client uh, with your patient with your students so repo building is the first pillar of nlp the second uh, you know pillar of nlp is outcome thinking or outcome focus whenever you do anything whenever you want to teach whenever you want to guide whenever you uh, go for any work you focus on outcome you know that after working this i'll be having this folk this outcome it is a result oriented approach it is having outcome oriented for uh, you know approach so nlp help us to work at outcome oriented approach so here second pillar of nlp is outcome focus because it uh, it gives focus on uh, uh, you know outcome what kind of outcome we are getting after doing this if i'm eating too much definitely i can get fat if i am uh, you know procrastinating all the time i'm not doing my work definitely i will not do my work on time if i am lazy i'll be getting this result if i'm active enough i'll be getting this result if i'm attending my school college in time i'll be getting this result it is having outcome oriented approach and the third thing is sensory acuity sensory acuity mean it uses our senses to to achieve result it work at senses level we have five senses and nlp works at vak level visual auditory and uh, kinesthetic visual mean picture whatever we receive we receive in the form of picture we get in the form of picture if i say tell me something yesterday you your work tell me something about your work uh, about uh, your office your college your university so what you are recalling in the form of picture you recall thing in the form of picture you will tell that i went to college i worked over there i taught my student and then doing this or that i came i come back so this is what sensory equity here we are using senses of uh, uh, you know touch taste sight smell sound nothing go beyond five senses all we get through five senses so sensory equity gives us knowledge how to perceive thing through five senses how five senses play play role to achieve goal how we receive data through five senses to our mind and uh, what is modeling uh, what is model language model M milton erickson he gives language model which is also known as language model we we get uh, uh, you know round about 7000 thoughts per day human mind receives 7000 thought per day so we get tons of information but is it uh, is it uh, good enough for human being to to get uh, Uh, so many thought and process it uh, at once we are unable to process so many thoughts we, which are coming to us so what we do we delete we distort and we generalize what human mind does human mind uses filters to to generalize thing to distort thing to change thing to to distort to delete and generalize so this way we get what is appropriate to us when we are going to our office we are coming from our office we are going to college we are coming back from our college we see so many things so many people so many people they come across do we remember all people no we don't remember all people we only remember something strange 
something unusual something that perceives our mind something that is close uh, close to our mind something that is related to our mind it mean our human mind it it deletes it uh, distorts and it generalizes information and according to uh, his requirement it uh, it it gets data information so human mind is having certain filters and through these filter it sees reality it is uh, very common in nlp that map is not territory we are not seeing reality rather we are seeing our mental reality human mind sees through mental reality not actual reality and existential reality there is one existential reality and there is a one mental reality and we runs according to our mental reality if so many people are over here and we show them one picture every person will be giving different view according to his her deletion distortions and uh, generalizations so every person sees his her mental reality not actual reality therefore in nlp it is called map is not territory and here in nlp we use language model to delete to distort and generalize once we know language model and we talk to somebody we use nlp technique mirroring, mirroring and matching reframing anchoring and uh, other techniques nlp techniques we can reframe we can perceive his her language model to what extent he or she is uh, deleting generalizing and uh, distorting information because we don't see reality we see mental reality which is existing in our mind not in actual world because actual world and our mind they have different approach to perceive thing to to have things we delete we distort and we generalize according to our mental reality not actual reality nlp we follow if you don't like the way you feel about something you can change it you are not tree you can go from one place to another if you don't understand something you can change your direction and you you can see something will look clear to you so if you don't like the way something appearing to you the way something are in front of you you can change it so nlp gives us flexibility so as uh, i discussed four pillars of nlp so one is rapport building as a sensory acuity and uh, then uh, flexibility and then we discuss about sensory so all these uh, four pillar also teaches us that if we don't like the way something looking to us we can we can change it the way we want conscious mind versus subconscious mind we have a definition of a conscious mind unconscious mind preconscious mind but here in nlp we have different approach to define nlp subconscious and conscious mind conscious mind mean you are talking to me at the moment you are watching me and i am in front of you at the same time you are talking to me and i am talking to you you are also recalling your your fridge your kitchen people and uh, the voices of your near and dear everybody they, they they talk to you yesterday day before yesterday some year back you can recall through modality and sub modality in your mind like sense five senses you are recalling all these things so it is your subconscious whatever you have stored information in your mind it's your subconscious mind you are talking to me you are talking to me but at the same time you are recalling images of your parents your uh, your surrounding your near and dear and your house your kitchen and your fridge and something like that even you know what is in your fridge what is what where is that it's stored in your subconscious mind so in nlp we we say conscious mind is that uh, when you are uh, when you are uh, uh, aware of something right in front of you but there are some data there are some information stored in your mind it is stored in your subconscious mind if you know the art of reprinting your subconscious mind you can change 
you know you can change your result if you work on your subconscious reimprinting you can change your wellness you can change your mental wellness you can change your result you can change your uh, uh, you know way of reading your you can achieve better result you can uh, have a good relationship you can have uh, uh, good health so we can if we work on our subconscious mind we can we can change our uh, our view we can change uh, uh, the way we looking at things so subconscious re-imprinting in NLP we learn how to re-imprint our subconscious mind our subconscious mind is also known as habit mind whatever you are doing through autopilot way you get up early in the morning you talk to same people you you meet same people you go to same college same class and you come back you are doing it you have been doing for 10 years you are doing for 10 years 12 years it is in your subconscious you are even, even driving driving bike or car it is through your subconscious mind because you are somewhere else uh, you are thinking somewhere else but uh, through your you are talking to somebody in conscious through conscious mind but subconsciously you are driving car because it been uh, through habit so whatever you are doing through habit it is known as your subconscious mind presuppositions of NLP I already discussed some presupposition of NLP whenever you learn about NLP NLP teaches you it teaches you some presuppositions so have respect for other person's model of the world when you talk to anybody he or she is having her own model of the world map is not territory whatever you are doing it is through your mental map it's not through reality world reality is something but your mental reality is something else when you contradict somebody when you come across anybody who is having different map of the world if you have consciousness if you have awareness and you have studied NLP and uh, its model what would you do you will respect other map of the world because each and every person is brought up with different map of the world he or she is uh, brought up by different situation different parent different culture different religion different uh, way of thinking and different beliefs you respect other models of world everybody is uh, having her model of world in NLP it is called that having choice is better than having no choice so when you learn NLP it gives you choices you are not limited now you have many choices because when you respond to somebody you can either react or positively or consciously respond so when you learn NLP techniques when you learn NLP models when you learn NLP it gives you consciousness awareness and choices you respect other model of world other mental reality because his her reality is different from your reality the map is not territory NLP presupposition teaches us everybody is having his her own map of world so the map is not territory whatever you have map it is not uh, as the territory it is just your and limited to your mental reality so you respect you respond and you consciously respond other mind and body forms linked system in NLP mind and body one so whatever you work on your mind body they are they are related to each other therefore we have psychosomatic disease psycho mean our mind our brain somatic mean body so whatever you have disease through your mind and it impacts your body it is known as psychosomatic disease and once you have consciousness and awareness through NLP it teaches you how mind bodies are connected how they are related to each other how one affects the other you study the uh, you know your neurotransmitters they are impacting and they're releasing dopamine they are releasing cortisol and they um, they are impacting your body so in NLP we are taught we are taught mind and body are linked 
वट एवर यू आर डॉइंग इज नॉट वर्किंग डू समथिंग एल्स एज आई टोल्ड अर्लियर इफ यू थिंक दैट आई कैन चेंज द वे लुकिंग एट द थिंग्स एज वैन डायर सैड वैन डायर वन सैड इफ यू चेंज द वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट द थिंग द थिंग यू लुकिंग एट एल चेंज इफ यू व्यू समथिंग डिफरेंट वे द वे ऑफ व्यूइंग इज चेंज you can change uh, your perspective it depends how you view thing so in nlp you will learn how you can view thing consciously it gives awareness it gives awareness how you change your way of looking at the thing choice is better than no choice if you have choice is better and nlp techniques and nlp knowledge it gives us how to have many choices how to have so many choices and uh, when when you have so many choices you can change the way of looking at things we are always communicating so how we communicate we communicate through verbal and non verbal in nlp it teaches us we communicate 7% through words if i say that i am very happy and enjoying my life i say you you ask me how are you and i say that i'm very happy enjoying my life if my body language not support if my body language does not uh, uh, you know collaborate with my 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 words it does not convey forceful meaning so if you ask how are you i will say that i'm very happy and enjoying my life enjoying my life and i also give uh, a good gestures and body postures what happens you will get forceful meaning out of my sentences so what happens we communicate 7% through word uh, 38% through tones and uh, 55% through body language so what matter for, what matters for us how we responding through our body language through our tone it matters a lot because 7% we need 7% word so for communication we need body language and tone because it matters a, a lot the meaning of your communication is the response you get so whatever you communicate according to your communication you get its response if you talk to somebody according to your communication you are getting response if you uh, if you are communicating well with other people the people they are listening to you you will have better response so it depends on how you communicate with uh, with your audience with your people with your student with your listeners so nlp gives us uh, consciousness and awareness it teaches us how to communicate with your listeners and people modality and sub modality a person's representational system is known as uh, modalities when we talk about uh, modality we have five senses and whenever i talk about uh, five senses five senses mean modalities and it has sub modalities as well uh, we have visual modality gustatory modality auditory modality olfactory modalities and uh, this way our touch taste sight smell sound and we have kinesthetic modality visual when we talk about visual visual mean images picture whenever we recall something we see something we see in the form of picture if i show you i say apple there will be a image of apple in your mind i say elephant there will be a image of elephant i see don't think about a black elephant so when i see don't think about black ele- elephant so image of elephants will come in your mind automatically it will come because mind perceive information information in the form of image what happen according to research we have two parts of brain left brain and right brain right brain is, is related to pictures and uh, left brain is related to uh, you know our critical thinking our thoughts and logic reason while this uh, right side is related to creativity one is critical thinking and other is creativity pictures so we recall ideas we 
recall data we recall information we recall stories we recall images we recall uh, you know people saying we recall uh, ideas in the form of visuals pictures so picture is known as uh, modality visual modality and then we have gustatory modality and this is related to our taste we have uh, certain tastes when we talk to somebody it gives a certain taste when we uh, you know eat something it gives a taste and we also remember thing in the form of taste and it can be bitter taste it can be good taste it can be sour taste and it depends how you experience something and according to experience you will be getting taste as well so this is known as gustatory modality and then we have auditory modality some song some songs are sweet some are bitter so some melodies they look sweet so it depend according to uh, your experience how you experience thing and according to experience you will be having auditory experience so it is known as auditory experience and then we have olfactory olfactory is related to smell how you smell something you remember some person from smell you met with your near and dear and you after that you separated after many years you use you uh, get the same fragrance what happened you recall the person who you met 5 years 7 year ago so this is related to all factory modality then we have kinesthetic modality so what happened in kinesthetic modality it is related to feeling and touch so touch and feeling are related to kinesthetic modality when we discuss about modality we also discuss about sub modality what is sub modality no so talk about the picture so when you have a modality at sub level for example talk about picture some picture are dark some picture are clear some picture are uh, beautiful some are ugly some are uh, you know white some are blank some are blurred it is known as sub modality so it is sub modality at uh, visual level at gustatory level or auditory level or uh, olfactory level and kinesthetic level so we have modality in nlp as well as sub modality and these modality help us to treat patient to treat client when you are nlp coach you can treat them by recalling their modalities and sub modalities some metaphors related to their stories so you 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 are not uh, uh, giving them medicine you are treating them through words through dialogues through hypnosis so you use the therapy uh, you use uh, uh, some therapeutic uh, uh, you know activities you take a model from uh, milton erickson's and uh, virginia satters and uh, fruits pearls so same people richard bandler and john grinder they take their model they copy them imitate them and after that they produce beautiful result you can talk about uh, ton tony robbins tony robbins also used their method and the, he is inspiring so many people even millions of people they are inspired from tony robbins and tony robbins also used this nlp approach nlp modalities sub modality metaphors and uh, knowledge and inspire people nlp technique if you are nlp coach and if you want to learn nlp science what you need to learn you need to learn some nlp techniques we have nlp techniques mirroring and matching i already discussed in my lecture nlp help us to 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 mirror and match with other person if you are talking to me i model your way of uh, talking i mirror or oh, your way of behaving reacting responding and your your keywords what happened you started liking me you started uh, you know interacting positive way because i am mirroring and matching with you so how you sit how you talk how you behave how you react how you respond i am mirroring and matching with you you started liking me you started uh, discussing your uh, you heartily feeling with me so how does it happen it happens through nlp technique mirroring and matching so nlp provides us mirroring and matching through mirroring and matching you can model other language 
how he react how he respond how he use keyword how he uh, you know sit how he stand how he respond people start liking you people will uh, will like to interact with you so mirroring uh, help you uh, having a, a you know communication Uh, like like language model it helps you to copy other language model so how you copy other language model you see how he deletes how he distort and how he generalize thing how he sit how he use certain word how he react how he respond so once you started copying imitating in mirroring and matching with other person other person wants to talk to you, he or she may be client she may he or she may be your a uh, student he or she may be your boss so whoever you use nlp technique mirroring mirroring and matching people start liking you swish pattern swish pattern helps you to see in a position you want to get for example you want to get smart body you want to have a, a, you know smart you want to get your smart body you want to achieve certain goal what you see you switch yourself in that position if i am eating too much i'll be having this fat body if i'm eating less and i am eating what is appropriate for me i'll be getting this body so you switch yourself in that position it helps you to achieve result and it helps you to anchor so swish pattern helps you to see you in a position you want to get you want to get to good position so what happen you will see how i get this first position if i get first position i'll be getting this job you want to have smart body i'll be eating this and i'll be getting this body so this way swish pattern helps you to take you in that position where you are smart enough where you are healthy enough where you are good enough where, where you are uh, you know getting that position so swish is also an nlp technique it helps you to take you that position where you what you want to get anchoring 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 mean classical conditioning it's just like classical conditioning if you ever watch tony robbins when he speech he makes speech he is also uh, you know beating his uh, uh, you know breast and he is uh, even sometime anchoring on his hand so what is what does it mean anchoring mean to 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 just uh, give you to remind you something it takes you in a certain state it can take you from unresourceful state to resourceful state we have certain you know taste as uh, uh, as we see certain thing we get certain state for example when i passing uh, from uh, you know something like that uh, dogs and uh, i see lizard automatically my i feel uh, you know sweat on my hand and my palms how does i come how does uh, i come in that uh, state i come in that state because that time i am either in resourceful state or unresourceful state so through anchoring you can go from unresourceful state to resourceful state unproductive state to productive state so anchoring help us like like classical conditioning you uh, you your body is conditioned sometime what happens somebody sneezes and you get flu your body is anchored with sneeze so once somebody sneezes what happens you get flu there are many people people are, are sneezing but they don't get flu so it uh, it means that our body is anchored with that when we uh, do certain when we go certain place we start and start studying our body is conditioned and anchored with that state i am in my office whenever i sit over here i start studying because it gives me anchor it is anchoring my body to study when i go outside i am making gop shop and talking to my friends but whenever i comes over here i whenever i come over here i know it gives anchor to my body that now you have to study so anchoring help us to to take us from unresourceful state to resourceful state value illustration 
value elicitation help us to see us in a state where you are blessed where you are content and where you are satisfied where you are uh, happy for example you you think that uh, iphone give me happiness i when i get uh, iphone i can be very happy so you condition yourself you give value elicitation so you deconstruct this thought that whenever i get uh, iphone i i will be very rich i will show myself very rich i will be very happy no deconstruct this thought if i want if uh, the meaning of getting uh, iphone is uh, happiness then i can feel happiness inside me i can be satisfied i can be contented i can be happy without iphone so i can be happy without iphone i give value illustration that uh, the source of iphone the the meaning of iphone is happiness then happiness is possible without iphone so this way you give value illustrations to nlp technique and you can enjoy happiness without material things and then language pattern language pattern mean we use language pattern by deleting distorting and uh, generalizing thing and every person uses these filters in a way to process informations and according to mental reality he forms opinion and then there is a i moment i moment is also uh, you know it's also a kind of an nlp technique in nlp we we notice other other people i contact as i told earlier that right brain is related to images and creativity left brain is related to critical thinking it's related to uh, your uh, uh, audios and uh, it's related to like uh, critical thoughts so it is a well common thought thought and it's a well known quote eyes are the window to our soul so when you see in eyes according to nlp so you see a uh, memory left side you see left side you are recalling visual memories oral memories inner dialogue when you see downward you are having internal dialogue when you see uh, left side right side right side you uh, you see visual construct constructing image nerve see seen before oral construct constructing sound like that kinesthetic memory it's are related to our right side of brain i hope in today's lecture you people have learned about nlp what is nlp and uh, what is conscious mind what is subconscious mind and uh, what is modality and sub modality and uh, you have learned all these thing you can apply uh, the knowledge of nlp in your practical life and uh, you can achieve good result how far the best